I've been meaning to make a video on reflectors for months now, but given my upload frequency, you can tell how lazy I've been this year. I'm now working full time and pursuing a master's degree, so I apologize to all of those diehard fans who've been starved for content for so long. But here we go, it's finally happening. There are only seven characters in Melee who have moves that can reflect projectiles. These are Mario, Dr. Mario, Fox, Falco, Ness, and Zelda, and oh, uh, you too. Well, technically any character can reflect projectiles with a power shield in Melee, so it's more like 26 characters. This is the main reason for reflectors being kind of rare to see in competitive Melee. Well, that and the fact that only two out of the seven characters listed are considered viable at the top level. Yeah. Not the time. Before I get into the specifics of each character's reflector, it should be noted that all reflecting moves in melee have a 1.5 times damage multiplier and no speed multiplier like in the later games. So while each reflecting move has different properties attack-wise, they're all going to do roughly the same thing when they send out a projectile in the opposite direction. Not. Yet. In addition to this, all reflectors can break. Yeah, they each have a threshold of about 50% until they fail and then stun the character as if they got a shield break. This is, however, not as easy to do as it is in the later games and thus really, really uncommon to see without setting it up intentionally. Mario's cape and Dr. Mario's super sheet, as it's called, are both very good moves outside of simply reflecting. They are fantastic edgeguard moves and can even be used to punish rest better than most of the cast since they don't wake up Jigglypuff. Another use of their side B is for recovery. While Mario's is more helpful, both moves can be used to stall in midair and gain slightly more distance while getting back to the stage. The reflect box for these moves stays out way later than the actual hitbox, so they can reflect projectiles even when it looks like the move is over. Fox and Falco's reflectors are both iconic in melee, obviously, as much as they are weapons of mass destruction. Both hitboxes are extremely useful and are two of the only three frame one moves in the game, the other being rest. Fox's sends at a horizontal angle with fixed knockback and can be used in countless situations from approaching to edgeguarding to comboing to mix-ups to pressuring. Falco sends upward and can be used for his pillar combos, edgeguarding, and setting up into his mini kill moves. The reflect box comes out on frame 4 and covers their entire body. Its main advantage over other reflectors is that it can be held out indefinitely, but it is the only reflector that doesn't have a damaging hitbox out at the same time as the reflect box. Ness's reflector, the Home Run Swing, as it is officially named, is a rather forgotten move in melee, mostly due to the lack of use in really any levels of play. It's the only reflector to not be tied to a special move, being attached to his forward smash instead. Ness swings his baseball bat and can either bash in his opponent's head or send projectiles out into left field. Me saying that is pretty generous though, because it's probably the worst reflector in the game for a variety of reasons. It has considerable startup, with the reflector coming out on frame 16 along with all the other hits boxes. It also ends on frame 17, which means that it's a reflector that's only out for two frames. The move lasts for 49 frames in total, which means that this move takes almost an entire second to complete, and it takes more than half a second to complete after reflecting the projectile. And finally, the damaging hitboxes of the bat are in front of the reflect box, which for some reason surrounds Ness's body, so even if you do get the timing right, you'll more often than not cancel out the projectile completely instead of sending it back. This means that it's more useful to do this. Zelda's Nehru's love is alright, but it's best used for just reflection. It can sometimes be used as a get off me move, but it has slow startup compared to its later iterations, and its multi-hit properties and small hitboxes mean that it's easy to avoid taking damage or getting launched. The reflect box comes out on frame 4, tied with Fox and Falco for the fastest, and lasts over half a second, well past the point of the crystal disappearing, so it can be pretty deceptive. It has niche use as an edge guarding tool, but it can't do anything that her down smash or lightning kicks can't do better. Also, she dabs on frame 16, so it's the best move in the game. Finally, we have Mewtwo, Mewtwo's Confusion, one of the weirdest moves in the game. As an attacking move, it isn't very good. It's a command grab by design, but because of its high amount of end lag, any character can hit Mewtwo before he finishes the attack. As a reflector, I don't know how much of this was intentional by the design team, but it acts more of a deflector, as I'm calling it, since its largest drawback is that it doesn't change ownership of the projectiles. This means that if Mewtwo deflects Samus's charge shot, it'll turn around but pass right through Samus. It also reacts really oddly with various moves. Sometimes it might damage Mewtwo itself and others, or sometimes it might nullify a hitbox completely. This was pretty difficult to test because there's only a handful of projectiles that I was able to run into after deflection. 
but they largely gave mixed results, so maybe this warrants its own video. And that's that. Thanks for listening. I hope you learned something new. I plan to continue my Move Showcase series, so consider subscribing if you want to see more of that.